What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out how Adam would book CM Punk's AEW return. This should be a good one, man. I want to see how Adam would uh book uh, his return. I'm pretty sure it would be ten times better than what we got going on right now. Um, I believe he is slated to still be a part of the AEW uh, Collision show. At one point, he wasn't, and now he is apparently. Um, it's, it's, it's just really weird how the backstage situations is coming to the forefront and it's, it's kind of derailed things and then things got put back on track and it got derailed again and put back on track. It's, it's just a lot of confusion. So, um, we're going to see how Adam will book it. I'm pretty sure it will be 10 times better than what's happening right now. Also, I did get a chance to check out AEW Double or Nothing. Um, to give my honest opinion, I'm not going to go into a, a long review because we're going to get to this video. I really didn't care for it that much. Um, the only match I really, really enjoyed thoroughly was the, the, the Pillars match. I enjoyed that match thoroughly. That Fatal 4-Way was fantastic. That was fun. Definitely enjoyed that so much. Um, there was some cool stuff in uh, the uh, Anarchy and uh in the arena match it was some cool stuff the flaming uh well the the spark shooting out of uh, out of uh out of the shoe uh straight to uh, john moxley's face was a crazy spot it was just dumb fun but at the same time it was it, it was a little bit too much it was just a lot of chaos um it, it was it was okay you know i'm still not a big fan of them playing music first half of the match it kind of kind of throws me off but i get why they're doing that or what not to kind of i don't know actually i don't know that, that's kind of an interesting thing there's still <laughs> they've done it before where the you know the theme song will just play throughout the you know the first half of the match and you know, or whatnot and then it'll eventually stop so i i never really understood the logic behind that but it, it was okay I mean, the match was you know what i expected to be nothing to go home about but other than that um, it was a uh, okay show. It's not something that I would rush back to go watch over and over again or anything like that. I do feel like the first half of the show was not hitting compared to the second half. So that's just my thoughts and opinions on it. Not going to go into great detail, but I did enjoy that fatal four way match for the AEW Championship. Thought that was fantastic. All right, let's get into how Adam would book this. Appreciate all the love and support. I ain't trying to take too much of the time. Let's do this thing. Right. Yeah. I feel the same as you. On this channel, I've done a fantasy booking of CM Punk's return to WWE, CM Punk's debut in AEW, and now CM Punk's return to AEW. The circle is closed, the deep one slumbers for another hundred years. I mean, Christ, Punk even featured in my year of MJF booking. There's something about Chunky Monkey Punky that just keeps drawing me in. And honestly, I'm trying to work out what it is. Obviously, <laughs> there's the business side of things. Whack old CM Grump on a thumbnail and Ollie Davis going to a few extra inches in his pocket. I'm talking about his wallet, don't be crude. There's something about punk that just inflames everyone in the IWC. No one sits on the fence. Either people are desperate for him to return and reignite AEW with his needle shifting star power and the other camp believes he should start off and take his precious ego with him. Everyone mm -hmm. seems to agree that after Brawl Out there's a lot of money to be made yes. with Punk going back to AEW yes. and the rough and tumbles that that will ensue but a lot of people can't agree if it's worth all that money to sow dissension in your locker room. On one hand everyone you know grow up sit down and talk like grown ass adults on the other i'm 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 feeling what he's talking about now i get it there was some personal issues i understand there's you you're always gonna find someone in life and take this as a life lesson y'all you know for my younger subscribers there's gonna be somebody that you work with you do not like it happens it's a part of life and you may even get into it with that person. But at the end of the day, you ain't got to be that person's best friend. You ain't got to sit up there and, you know, try to really get to know that person. No, you don't. If you don't want to, and if they're not receptive to it, that's fine. But at the end of the day, it's about making your money <clears throat> and going home to your family. Put, put aside whatever issues and petty gripes, make your money, 
go on to your family. Unless it's just that personal where it's like it's on site when you see that person, then you probably should remove yourself from that situation. But if it's not like that or it can't be handled in an adult way, what are we doing, bro? Money to be made and they're throwing it away. On the other hand, it is a bit rich to say that when the most publicly unprofessional out of all of them seems to be suffering no professional consequences for that. Couple all of this with it. the fact that even after the gripe bomb, hell, perhaps even because of it, I feel pretty confident in saying that CM Punk is the single best promo in wrestling today. Like he's more naturally charismatic than even MJF. Compare the two men's pipe mm -hmm. bombs. They both like done pipe bombs against their own company. Punk's was a TV masterclass and MJF's just seems a bit more stagey and theatrical in comparison. Even when moaning and saying incredibly petty things at a press conference, Punk has a supernatural way with words. I'm mm -hmm. old, I'm tired and I work with children it's an already <laughs> iconic line that is <laughs> i'm all the time i work with him and children bro. <laughs> it's got such good meter it's so damning i mean it's iconic not necessarily for good reason but it is punk's tirade against his own company and the ensuing fight with kenny and the bucks it galvanized the wrestling world it did. at the time of recording this in april 2023 punk is all but confirmed to be returning to the company and yet also at the time of recording the company seemed to be handling Handling it in the least exciting way possible. See, starting in June, AEW will reportedly be launching a new show, AEW Collision, to air on Saturdays and be fronted by Charles Montgomery Punk, with the current talk indicating that AEW will be initiating a sort of soft brand split with certain stars, aka The Elite, never leaving Dynamite, and certain mm -hmm. stars, aka CM Punk, never leaving Collision. And legitimately, what the are you doing? We want to see the pissy boys have their pissy little piss fight. We don't. Yeah, bro, that's that's. I've said it before. Sometimes the best feuds in wrestling come from real situations, real beefs, real problems. They're just professional enough to not legitimately try to kill each other in the ring. But at the same time, they don't find, they, they probably wouldn't have a problem being a little bit stiff. You know what I'm saying? On certain shots. But it makes it, once you blur the lines, especially in 2023, when you can blur the lines of what's real and what's fake or, uh, or work or storyline, you have people. Because now we don't know what's really real, what's really a work. It all blends together. That's is good storytelling that is the principle of wrestling you not knowing what's happening in the ring is it real is it fake are they really going at it is did they are they working together on this How, what's going on here just want to see cm punk we want to see the messy little drama and chant our messy little chants and revel in the rare lightning in a bottle turbocharged meta reality yes. smeared all over this wrestling by cm punk who's built a career on doing this exact thing these rosters are gonna have to be in the same building for pay-per-views aren't they are you just gonna keep the elite and cm punk on different sides of the it's arenas so... forever can no one talk to each other and put their differences aside for a gigantic cash bonus i feel like an old man social media has ruined wrestling in lots of ways but namely legions of fans rushing to socials to amplify every single bitchy tweet into a huge deal it's the worst and do you we're not exact strangers to that over here, we make money off backstage drama, so, you know, everyone ramps it up and up and up to the point where wrestlers' egos are so jacked up by their own tribes that they can't back down. And Tony can't seem to keep order, and it's such a disappointing powder keg. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not owed matches between people who hate each other. Yeah. I'm just not owed that. Without knowing all the details, we can't dictate when and how people choose to forgive or move on. Of Picking course, of course. Picking such a strong side in all of this, it doesn't help. It makes things worse. It makes people dig their heels even deeper into the sand. Does my desire to see superheated wrestling trump the emotional and mental state of people in a situation I'm not fully aware of? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely not. From my limited perspective, does this seem like a solvable situation with tremendous upsides? Yes, yeah. that's all I can say, apart from 
sharing with you all the things I would like to see in a perfect world. It's wish fulfillment time. Let me have a go. You make some fair points. Let's get right into this one, man. So we start with Double or Nothing 2023 and the building blocks being set in place. Now here is what I would like to see. FTR versus The Acclaimed. Finally get this match and use it to turn FTR heel, including a spot where they hit Caster. I wish they would have did that. That would have been pretty cool. <laughs> but they didn't, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, shout out... Uh, um, <laughs> this was a funny I have to mention this because this was funny man they coming down to the ramp, ramp rapping per usual and you know Buddy Murphy is you know part of House of Black and them mentioning Dominic <laughs> and Buddy Murphy's being cucked by Dominic that was funny that was actually funny that was a good one that is a good one because once again Rhea's in a real relationship with him but they're on they have a Dominic has a TV relationship with with um with uh, Rhea Ripley. It's, it's so funny, bro. <laughs> Bowens with double GTSs. They cheat to win, screwing the acclaimed out of their shot. Evil FTR. Yay, the correct yeah. FTR. To be honest, face FTR are also very good, but this yeah. way makes way more sense for the story that I'm about to tell. Okay, the fatal okay. four pillars way in the demi main event. A miscommunication happens between Darby Allen and Sting. The Sting accidentally missed Darby. MJF hits him with the diamond ring with his belt. The main event mm -hmm. is an anarchy in the arena match. Blackpool Combat Club versus the elite Kenny Omega and the Bucks and Konosuke Takeshita. Adam Page isn't involved in this match. He was asked by the elite, but he's still not ready to team up again after everything. Mm. A bunch of silly mayhem happens in a match. Takeshita jumps off a bunch of ridiculous things. The elite fire, I know, bro. It's funny that he was involved in a match just in a different way. He turned on on Kenny and them, <laughs> which is so funny that he's saying this. And Danderson out of a f trebuchet, John Moxley goes full Begby from train spotting, throwing pint glasses full of piss over his shoulder from the press box. The end of the match sees Kenny Omega preparing to do his terminate a dive when cult of personality mm -hmm. hits mm -hmm. and CM Punk walks out onto the ramp. That is distraction enough for Danielson to lock in the label lock with a screwdriver across Kenny's face for the tap out win. Punk simply smirks and walks to the back, mm. and Punk doesn't come back for another month. The Bucks and Kenny finish up their feud with Blackpool Combat Club and the company That's very pivots interesting. in booking to the return of Forbidden Door. Omega and Osprey rekindle their feud. John Moxley lays out an open challenge. A triple tag match for the Trios Championships is set. House of Black versus Hiroshi Tanahashi, Yoshihashi and Goto versus FTR and a partner of their choice to be revealed on the Go Home Dynamite on June 21st, which happens to emanate from Chicago. Huh. Of course, that person is CM Punk, who takes up the mic, looks like he's gonna speak, milks a crowd for ages for saying nothing, putting down the mic, and leaving without saying a word. Forbidden okay. Door 2 Electric Boogaloo in a rundown of this fantasy card. House of Black versus Punk FTR versus Tanahashi Yoshihashi and Goto with Punk and FTR winning the Trios Championships. Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega with Ospreay winning the IWGP US Championship. MJF successfully defending the AEW Championship against Kazuchika Okada. Give it to me, I'm ready for it. John Moxley's <laughs> open challenge being answered by a debuting Kota Ibushi. Hangman Adam Page competing for but failing to win the IWGP Heavyweight Championship for Tanada. Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. to determine who is going to win the Brian Danielson Award for best Brian Danielson of the year. It's a good <laughs> show. All seems quiet. No backstage drama yeah. for now. Okay. So the next stretch of AW booking is building to two major shows. All In at Wembley Stadium, oi oi, and All <laughs> Out two weeks later, presumably followed by All Shake It All About two weeks after that. The Elite <laughs> and Punk FTR are booked in a match for the Trios titles, the same titles the Elite were forced to vacate owing to the fight that took place following All Out the year before. The two teams come face to face in the ring, but are interrupted by Don Callis. Callis stands in the middle of the Elite, Punk and FTR, talks about how this company was founded on a bet. That's why they called it All In. Now here, Tony Khan thinks there's money to be made here. We're playing our first stadium, boys. So Khan's rolling the dice, but it's a big gamble. 
and this is a volatile situation. So here's the deal. You get your promo time separately. You can talk and you can talk, but that's mm. it. There'll be no violence, not until all in. If there's any physicality between any of you before then the match is off and each of you will eat a $250,000 fine to pay back the gate that you're throwing away. So it's all about delaying that gratification. Mm -hmm. Punk hasn't said. That's good. That's, I like how he's booking this. He's booking this in the sense of, you want to hear what Punk has to say. Whether people hate him or love him, they're going to want to hear what he has to say. And he's not saying anything. And to the word. And I like the no contact before the actual match. You know it's going to get heated. You know it's going to get personal. Even more than it already is now. A word since coming back. Not one word into the microphone. The Elite get to speak first. Young Bucks cutting a promo. Next week, FTR cut their promo. Then the next week after that, Kenny speaks. And then finally... CM Punk. They're all saying things we already know, but filling in some of the blanks as to what happened on that fateful night. Punk's promo is obviously the most incendiary. At the end of the day, I tried making friends, I tried making memories, and now I'm just gonna make money. Hmm. People who built this company. What? Billy and Punk FDR come close to each other, nose to nose, but Don Callis comes out to plead the elite to stand down. They do, but before they do, Punk clocks Callis in the head with his title, his Trios title, before him and FTR roll out of the ring. Bit of heat before the stadium show. All in happens, and here's a small bit of my imaginary card to try and draw a stadium sized crowd. Sting versus Darby Allen, a friendly competition between Mentor and Manatee, which Sting <laughs> wins, and Darby is clearly very, very, very angry about that. That. Brian Danielson mm. versus Kota Ibushi, because yes, f***ing please. Pat yeah. <laughs> versus Will Ospreay for the IWGP US Championship. Jamie Hayter versus Paige for the AEW Women's Championship. MJF versus Hank. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's not happening, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, she ended up losing her match as well. <laughs> Man, Adam Page in an intercontinental AEW championship challenge, which is based on Champions League's rules because football, because England, oi oi. MJF and Paige have two matches, two 30 minute Iron Man matches, one are all in, one are all out. Whoever gets the most total points after the second match wins the championship. This is so Paige can go something like two one up, on the first night, big happy achievement moment for Hangman in the stadium, because people are gonna love Hangman over here. Trust me, they really, really are. But then he can lose 3-2 at All Out. The main event of All In, of course, is Punk FTR versus Kenny Omega and Young Bucks, because give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. Then take away what they want by having Punk and FTR cheat to win, bashing Kenny and Bucks with the belts. This builds to All Out. Shortly afterwards, with the following matches, Sting versus Darby Allen 2, with Darby turning heel beforehand and then beating Sting to see Sting broken hearted, walking away from the company for a few months because that's what Sting does when a promotion breaks his heart. FTR yeah. versus the Young Bucks, the third match, a two out of three falls match for the AW tag titles, which the Young Bucks win. CM Punk versus Kenny Omega, one on one. Kenny Omega wins that. And the main event mm. is the second match in the series, MJF versus Hangman Page, which ends when CM Punk helps MJF to beat Page. Now, oh. this is where my booking sort of ties in with my year of MJF. That shit would be, what? That would be crazy. What? <laughs> that would be, crowd would go insane. That would be crazy. That would be, I, I wouldn't even have a problem with that. Holy shit, that would be crazy. Booking Punk allies with MGF telling him, I'm so proud of you, of everyone in the company, of all these people. Ironically, it's you, you. Mm -hmm. that wanted to learn from me. It's you that brought out the best in me. It's you that was the only goddamn professional in this whole promotion. F Tony Khan, Punk vows to help MJF keep the AEW championship wow. until MJF's contract expires, just like Punk did in WWE. They form oh. a super group, CM Punk, FTR, MJF, the <laughs> CM Pinnacle. An Avengers assemble a purely oh. grumpy sod to professional wrestling. All that's left is them to be managed by Jim Cornette, yet the perfect <laughs> nexus of irascible wrestling. If they were managed by Jim Cornette, that's it. That's it. Because <laughs> Jim Cornette loves MJF. He loves FTR. He loves CM Punk. He feels like those are the last Mohicans of wrestling. And you know what? Fuck it. Because <laughs> people hate Jim Cornette. Fuck it, bro. That would 
draw so much money. <laughs> they won't be managed by Jim, though, please. Please don't put him on live TV. No, For the next few yet. months, that is the group's <laughs> mission. They're definitely not going to do that, Jim. <laughs> Jim definitely has that old school mind, bro. Like it, it's a different time, different period in the world. He he got that old school mind, so nah, but he would definitely love to manage them. <laughs> and Punk and FTR hold on to the trios titles and MJF holds on to the AEW title. Everyone's got a belt. Tony Khan keeps throwing challenge after challenge at the group and they always use the numbers game to win and it's getting really, really stressful for the company. I've already gone into this in some form in my MJF booking video, so I won't recap that too much. Point is, Kenny Omega approaches Kota Ibushi. He asks him to join the elite and help them against this numbers game, but Kota refuses. Kota and Kenny have barely featured together on AEW so far. Kenny asks, why not? And Kota simply replies, you left. The elite find themselves constantly outnumbered and that is when Hangman Adam Page finally reunites with the elite. This threat binds them all together like none other in company history. This poison at the heart of AEW needs to be cut out. The go-home show before full gear is a promo battle between Punk and Page, mm. a rekindling of the promo that bizarrely started this whole mm -hmm. thing last year on the 25th of May. Now we're at full gear and a blood and guts match. MJF Punk and FTR versus the elite and hangman Adam Page. During the match, FTR cut the ropes in between the two rings, creates more of a fight pit, but also it neutralizes Page's buckshot Larry. At the end of the match, mm. sees Omega hit MJF with the one winged angel. The Bucks hit FDR with brain busters. And then as CM Punk slowly gets to his feet, the Bucks swing Adam Page around with a kind of double arm drag to simulate him flipping over the ropes. And he nails Punk with a buckshot lariat. Hangman Page locks Punk in the Anaconda vice. Punk flips him off and then and passes, passes out, out as the elite win. Now this whole storyline is culminating at the end of the year because it's MGF's whole contract business. His contract runs out on the 1st of January. Sting versus Darby Allen with Sting's career on the line. His AEW career began at winter is coming out. It's going to end here at the hands of his once former protege. And also, it's the last chance to get the belt off MJF. And considering everything that's come up until this point, the main event should be MJF versus Kenny Omega. Three years after Kenny won his first and only AEW championship, he is now Mr. AEW, the company's last chance to stop Punk and MGF screwing mm. the company over with its top title. At the end of the match, the ref goes down, Punk and FTR make their impact, but instead of Bucks making the save, it's Kota Ibushi. Mm -hmm. Him and Kenny hit golden trigger on MJF. Omega plants MJF with the one-winged angel and becomes the new AEW champion. Okay. Him and Kota Ibushi celebrate, for Ibushi knocks out Kenny with the biggest slap to the face that anyone's ever seen. MJF re-signs with AEW out of humiliation and he turns on CM Punk. Why? Because, says MJF, because you stupid old man, I'm a snake. <laughs> Final yep. chapter is Revolution, which is sold on the dual main event, all about allies imploding. Punk versus MJF in a loser leaves dynamite match. MJF beats Punk yeah. and he's banished to collision. Kota Ibushi versus Kenny Omega as the Golden Lovers try to destroy each other. Ibushi beats Kenny to become the new AEW champion. And from that point on, you can do your brand split, separate everyone involved in Brawl Out after making pretty much all the money that can be yeah. made from pairing these people against each other. And that is how I would book CM Punk's AEW great. return. Won't happen in a million f years, nope. but sod it. It's <laughs> nice to imagine that wrestlers might get on long enough to do something like it. That was it. great. Oh, hello. Look, here I am. That was fantastic, bro. I gotta get out like, man. That was fucking, man, that's, that's, that's all we want. That's all I want. That's it. I get it. You can't, you know, force people who don't really like each other to work with each other. I get it. I understand it. But at the same time, if there's some potential money that can be made and it can be fixed, I'm pretty sure there's a way to solve this problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a way to get this solved. It's just egos get involved. That's really what it is. I like that. I am all for that. That was fun. That was fun. That was fantastic. And it, I wish it would happen that way. I doubt it will. It's not even going to come close to what we're going to get, honestly. So, but hey, it, you, a one can dream, one can wish. 
But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy the way Adam booked CM Punk's AEW return? Because I know I did, man. I thought that was pretty dope, man. And honestly, how would y'all, how would y'all book his return? How would y'all go about his return back into the company? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Bro, too. 150K and I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on next one. Peace.